So welcome back, chat, to more... Of this nonsense. Thoughts of the... Cordum? I don't know. Nice. Me looking out into the distance. Ooh, another shrine. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> yeah, chat instantly finds the new avatar. <laughs> what was her name again? Nicole? Nicole. Nicole. Yeah. I mentioned to, uh, to Rick that I, I like the fact that she's looking directly at the viewer. No, she's not actually looking directly at the viewer. She's looking to the side. Oh, okay. All right, fine. <laughs> Someone already. No, looking it. straight ahead would be actually uncannily uncomfortable. That's one of the adages that I understand from art theory or whatever. Looking straight ahead with wide eyes and tiny little pupils. And a huge smile, full of sharp teeth. Oh, and Chad also notices we have a few more uh, emotes. Yes, we do. That we do. Thank you, Rick. You know what else we have? We have a weird little what? ghost bird following us. Yeah, we do. It's weird. It's a little weird. <laughs> He's helpful. Just don't don't look at his face. Don't look at his face. <laughs> don't don't look at the blank white eyes. There you go. <laughs> Those are uncomfortable. Yeah. I wonder if the Master Shard's ever been cataloged as an SCP. Some of these caves are still marked. I wonder how long that lasts. Forever. From what I've seen, once you've really? made an offering to the Satori, then he'll just uh, keep marking the caves that you haven't gotten the booble charms from yet that are in that area. Well, once you get them, does the mark vanish? Yeah, once you have the booble oh, charms. Oh, is it just all for all the uh, caves in the central area then? Yep. Yeah, in the area near it. There's... So the Satori spawns under Cherry Blossoms, and there's five? I think somebody, an NPC, said there's five Cherry Blossoms on the world map. So it's not a one-to-one -one tied with the uh, map regions. Because mm. there's like 15 map regions or something. Looks like tar. Uh, <laughs> there right, is oh, hello, guys. Just looking at chat, and oh boy, everybody's going crazy with Sasha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. You know who was the first one to go crazy with Sasha? Who? Oh. Sasha. Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, Sasha, how I dare you? I say Kevin. <laughs> well. Don't know if it was the first. <laughs> Kevin accidentally right, types in. I gotta keep taking pot shots at you. <laughs> I can see uh, uh, Kevin doing that, but he accidentally puts a Fido everywhere, and everybody right. thinks do you, do you really like Fido that much, Kevin. Oh, he is persistent, isn't he? Oh, never mind. Oh. 
So, um, a little bit of news. Uh, it's not confirmed yet. I'm still waiting for an answer, but I applied for um, a panel at CozyCon this weekend. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, Are you still do, accepting like applications for something like that? Wouldn't it be uh, kind of late already? I thought they had closed, but uh, Mifix told me to get in touch with uh, Tamarin, who runs the whole thing. And I did, and she said there's there was like one slot left, and uh, she encouraged me to apply, and, and I did. And I haven't gotten a response yet, but um, she sounded enthusiastic, so uh, I'm, I'm just fingers crossed. Um, thank you, that, Miller Dark, for the 13 month subscription. Yeah, thank you, Miller Dark. Oh, thanks, Miller. Ooh, don't think like I've seen you in stream before. Yeah. <laughs> don't, 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 don't. No, I want, I want these new emotes, so I'm using my Prime sub on, Twi on Rick. Actually, I probably should too. Um, what is my sub? Hey, Twitch or Twitch watchers, did you know if you uh, have Amazon Prime, you get one free Twitch subscription that. every month that you can use on any streamer you want? Any wow. streamer at all. What a deal. You just hit the resubscribe button, and when it says, hey, you need to charge $4.99, you hit the little checkbox that says use Prime sub, as long as you have your Amazon and Twitch accounts linked. Well, that is mm. so easy. They could do it right now, couldn't they? They could totally do that. Oh my god. How? If your parents have a Prime subscription, if your grandmother likes to order her <laughs> uh, makeup <laughs> on Amazon, or Good if save. your dad orders his uh, golf clubs. gallons of chrome spray paint every Ugh. month for whatever he uses that for, oh my you don't really want to know, but... Are you trying to tell our kids out there to start plugging their parents for money? Why not? You. And um, so what tier do I have to be to get all the emotes? Is it tier like two? Uh, uh two, I don't know what the tier is. It's twenty five. Twenty five dollars for the all the emotes. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and you gotta cheer a thousand bits. Oh, okay. New OC, yes it is. I guess that would be tier not, three. Mm, new is not the right word. Resuscitated, probably would be <laughs> More. better. Resuscitated. Revived. There you go. <laughs> I always need to collect more of these bright bloom seeds. That's right, friends. We have new emotes. I repeat, new emotes in a variety of mouthwatering pixel flavors. Pixel flavors. I don't know. <laughs> my brother's trying to. Uh, my brother's trying to get me some uh, stuff for uh, Team Fortress Two, like the Mario hat for Engineer. And I was like, okay, I love that. Nice. I get, I'm trying to get the pull pad on on, on medic. Hmm, <laughs> raw meat. Ooh. And then just keeping it up here. It looks so clean. Ooh. So clean. Anything else over there? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, fingers. There is a Kinney emote that you unlock once you have cheered 1,000 bits in the channel. Cumulative. So nobody, nobody feel pressure to just throw bits. It's absolutely don't yes. don't don't feel pressured at all. No pressure. If you want to fling little polygons at the cute uh, Umbreon, it's all, it's completely up to you. <laughs> Fingers, don't tell oh me my what God, to do. And they did it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I want a fairy. Hello? Hello? 
You got fairy. Time to not die. <laughs> Legatron says, Rick, have you built any Korok Saw movie traps yet? No. I wonder if they're ever going to introduce more evolutions. I mean, they did with, like, Sylveon. Well, yeah, that okay. That was just the latest, because they also had Glaceon and Leafeon. It looks like they're going to, yes. like, they were going Generation Even 2. Even Umbreon and, and Espreon were new ones. Well, yeah, but I mean, that was like... That was Generation no. 2. Yeah. <laughs> it's because they went Generation 2, then 4, then 6. Um, but... It's been a while. <laughs> well, they probably have to... In well, they don't have to introduce new types. Because you can have a steel one or a dragon one. Or right. One poison yeah, I, one. I, I, I keep wanting them to make a ghost one. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Called Angelion. Oh, nice. I like what that. About, what about a dragon EB? Yes, dragon type. Uh, now somebody put dragon on there. Huh? It'd just be like dragon on. <laughs> Drag Leon. With with Varian? <laughs> hey, not bad, not bad. No, not Weaverian. What's the, what's the dragon nomenclature for? Four legs, no wings. Uh, to ride the uh, Drake. I think no, it wouldn't be Drake. Drake, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Drake's a uh, the, the they're, nomenclature they're... is sort of made up, but I mean, well, yes, some it's consist... a mythical creature, of course. I mean, it's sort of made up even in that space. There's not, like, any mythological consistency to it either. <laughs> yeah. It's, I it's like sort of made up to, like, create some classifications for Dungeons and Dragons or whatever. Hmm. Yeah. I should yeah, two, two rear legs and then the front limbs operating as both front legs and wings is Wyvern. Right. Uh, well, only two wings. That's a gets a goat doll. Well, I mean, they. I, I'm looking. I don't know if this is even a reliable source or if it's like some fancy book. But it, what you're describing is is cited nope. in one yeah. place as an <laughs> as an amphip tier. I guess. I have no idea if that's whatever. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm looking up the. Oh, there's a well. The dragon encyclopedia. Funny enough. But because the thing is, when I hear Drakes, like I hear uh, the most common version of Drake I hear is basically a baby dragon. But I also hear the ones that are just like wingless and gigantic. Oh, okay. They just walk around with their four legs mm -hmm. instead. There's more tar down yeah. here. Okay. Uh, yeah, I am not. No, I'm well, looking at the, the the thing that everyone goes to. Yeah, four legs, no wings is a, is a Drake. Yeah. What about oh, the uh, Legend of Zelda ones? Six six legs, no wings. Uh, isn't that Long, thin um, body? Um, uh, what's his? What's he called again? I think either uh, a worm or uh... the thing I'm looking at here says lung dragon. Yeah, that works. The name's the dragons in Zelda. Um, Gleox, the one I remember offhand. Gleox. Yeah, it was like two-headed. Um. Pretty basic. Huh. Really old school. Like first game. It has a bunch of bright balloon seeds in here, okay. I feel like there was a three headed dragon in the early games too, I can't remember though. Yeah, there was a three headed one in the first game. Right. Yeah. And they were like different colors, right? <laughs> there's, there's uh, one uh, there was the uh, single headed dragon that was at the boss of the first dungeon. And right. then there was a two-headed dragon and a three-headed dragon that were basically the same thing. Okay. And yeah, don't call me on uh, call me out on this because I don't know how to pronounce it. But Empathy, uh the the flying dragons with with tail for no with no legs. And yeah, that was the one I saw too. I don't know. I've never heard oh. that term before. Yeah, I just use the term Quetzalcoatl because at least in where I am in the world, people know what that is. <laughs> You know, that reminds me that there's a statue in San Jose of Quetzalcoatl. And let me just let me just show you this because I know I'm not the only one who thinks this. 
Uh, here, I'll open it in chat too. I swear to God, from far away, this thing looks like a big, like a big shit. Um, keep wanting to go over to the shrine, then I'm looking over and like, ooh, shiny. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's how this game works. Uh, the I mean, princess. Okay. Tell me, tell me that that statue doesn't look like someone dropped like a stone deuce in a dragon shape. <laughs> anyway. Uh, okay. The like the third picture where it's painted brown, sure, and it's like smooth. <laughs> But like the ones where it looks textured, no, that just looks like a coiled up snake. Ah, fine. Keep looking at these and think I'm gonna run into some tomatoes. Nope, just peppers. <laughs> what would a fighting evolution look like and on their would hind it be legs. on two legs is the question <laughs> yeah i was gonna say would it be on two legs they have yeah a, they're... A ryu headband <laughs> oh my god that's adorable <laughs> you're just like you're so cute and it just straight punches you sorry <laughs> rukin <laughs> oh i definitely gonna be playing that this weekend by the way you date sure you can Sure you can! <laughs> oh my god, somebody draw it! Street Fighter Pokemon. So you're gonna... W which game is... Uh, are you gonna be playing, do you see? This weekend is Street Fighter 6. Oh, nice. Is that... Is that coming out this weekend? It's actually coming out in two weeks, but this weekend I found out that uh, Capcom is doing a beta test. You can actually play a demo right now. Oh. The beta test let you play the full thing this weekend. Ooh, nice. they're doing the server slam. Yeah, the yeah. server slam. They have server to do those nowadays. <laughs> server slam sounds like a move. They did it with uh, X Prime. It was okay, but I definitely been hyped for Street Fighter Six. Nice. I think the last one I played was three. <laughs> I'm a little behind the times. Actually. One of the cool things I could say for newcomers of, of Street Fighter is that uh, if anybody ever played Final Fight, hmm? I have, yeah. Apparently, I mean, uh, to be the fair, world... the last Street Fighter I played was Two Turbo. Hmm. Oh, that's at a at a at a video game museum arcade. <laughs> ah. That was where the whole Capcom sequel itis started. <laughs> Street Fighter 2 Turbo. They even joked about it in the movie Rocket Ralph. The other versions of Street Fighter were, were sort of like, I mean, it was sort of like the equivalent of DLCs. They didn't have DLCs back then, but I mean, yeah. it was like you have Turbo and then like what, Turbo Ultra or whatever. Yeah, it was Street Fighter, then Super Street Fighter 2, then right. Super Street Fighter 2 Ultra, then Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Turbos, when everybody said, yeah, you know what? We see what's going on here. And then they finally did Zero. Like, did, Zero came after the iterations of two, right? Uh, that was actually a different Street Fighter, but yeah, there, oh. there was a Street Fighter. Well, actually, let's see here. Like, I saw that, but I think at that point, I just kind of, like, embraced the fact that I'm not very good at fighting games. No. To be fair, well, like, uh... Fire anyway. I mean, I probably don't even need to do this. Yeah. <laughs> Fair, Capcom has realized that over the years, and that was one of the reasons why Street Fighter Free Third Strike uh, didn't sell so well, because it was clearly designed for tournament players. But, for tournament? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I won't expect anybody like here to be I like the master of parry. Mm -hmm. Parrying blows like a champ. Well, one of the... I mean, okay... Fundamentally, I mean, I can I can do strategies just fine. You know, like once I understand a combo, you know, then mm -hmm. then I, I can do it. The trick with those games is timing, and I'm not yeah. very good at timing. Like you have to understand that there's like this like, you know, 500 millisecond window or whatever, or even less than that, where you can do the 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 combo and get away with it. You know, everybody's you know, it's not just there's a hitbox. There's also this like window of time, you know, after a punch and before a recoil. You know. Well, yeah, I mean. That's the kind of thing that you, you learn from experience when playing fighting games. But the good thing about fighting games, though, these days uh, is that they 
the tutorials in there are actually getting a lot, a lot more better, and you can practice to your heart's content in there to figure out how to do that kind of stuff. It's put it in practice against players that becomes the tricky part. Yeah. Oh, we were jabbering. We missed a hype train. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. Did we hype? Did you hype? Did you hype up the the chat train, guys? <laughs> Choo choo. Looks like it was a success. Getting a couple more. Uh... I can't see what they are. They're funny little emotes. I don't. That one's a. That one looks like it's a. Uh, um, what do you call it? Gen one starter turtle thing. Um. Wow. I should know what this <laughs> thing is called. I've just fallen out of it. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> squirtle. Squirtle, that's me. Yeah. One of them was a squirtle. Can I even reach it from over here? Oh, it's it. Okay. No. <laughs> Mortal Kombat, uh, one got announced today, and I, and I, I took a look at it, and I played, uh, the three top uh, fighting game franchises I played, uh, and I still gotta get into Dragon, because the new Dragon Ball is actually pretty good, but it's mm -hmm. mainly Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, and Marvel vs. Capcom, because mm -hmm. that was, back then, I didn't realize how cool that series was, and that's mm -hmm. really what gets me into that series, so how cool it is, but that's the toughest of the fighting game series, is the Marvel vs. Capcom. Marvel vs. Capcom is? Yeah, nobody, nobody likes being wailed on in that series, and that then you can understand why. Hmm. And even though they improved it in Marvel's Capcom Infinite with the, with the, uh, uh, call call your partner to rescue system, uh, as some people called it, uh, rescue system. Ugh. But yeah, that was never an easy series. Hmm. For a series that had a lot of kids. I don't think my horse can hear me. <laughs> Ash says, Rick treats about villains reminds me about the YouTube video analyst about them. Hmm. She wants to know villains are. Mm. You say, you say? There was nothing under that rock. <laughs> Very no, there's a lot less of Koroks hiding under random rocks than places in this game, which I'm fine with. The stealth you. Chuck those rocks at you. 
Don't touch my bird. <laughs> I found out uh, when I was uh, in Oregon that there is uh, a, uh, a large rodent called a rock chuck, and I was very disappointed that they don't actually chuck rocks at you. I was really looking forward to that. much around here. Fire fruit. Mm. Lots and lots of fire fruit. It's just like free fire arrows. Nice. Sometimes I like to think when they come up with imaginary food like this, but their taste is like... You know For the fire, fire fruit? fruit? I was thinking... I would <laughs> what? Go oh, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say, uh, the fire fruit makes me think, is it gonna literally burn you from the inside, or is it just magical in nature, and it just extinguishes when you eat it? I just assumed it's like a chili pepper, you know? <laughs> That's kind of the vibe I get to. Obviously you get some... things like the ice fruit. Oh, wow, what the... Obviously some creative license would have to be taken, but I mean, I think, I, I, oh, in general, that's just how I am. Yeah, oh, these, these are a fun new enemy, the Talus base. Oh, they're shooting lasers at you, too. There you go. <laughs> and we just idiot. casually sniping them. <laughs> Ow. Oh, this Ow. is some bullshit. Alright, where's the thing? Let's see if we can find the thing. Oh, that was close. Up, it's up on the platform. So if you can get up onto the platform. <laughs> oh, that's fun. It's a little hard to just climb up there, though. <sighs> if I remember correctly, he used to stay down longer in the original. Uh, yeah, the taluses you find that don't have a whole base on their back stay down longer, long enough for you to climb up on them. Well, let's just uh, make a draft again. There you go. I don't want to waste this on that. See. I mean. Captain Reaper. Oh, there you go. Use a talus to kill a talus. Ah, that's it. That's it. Hey! Uh, You've been eating, Rick. Alright, so you got a method. That talus has crashed talus. I did not say go down the ladder. Yeah. I think he's just trying to punch you. Uh, that is really good timing. It is awkwardly shaped. You're not really going to be able to climb up them. No. But you have another way to get up on top. Yeah, I've had several ways to get up on top. Uh, I guess I could use a send on him. Ow. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm phasing out. There you go. Congratulations, you defeat the rock. Now look at this mess we created. <laughs> How will we ever recover from this? I bet go bow. Oh, is my horse nearby? Here it comes. Match the color of your club. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I can never get tired of riding a horse in this game, honestly. Fox is in the first one, too. Yeah, there were foxes in the first one. I can figure to get back into playing Breath of the Wild. Frederick says your hammer matches your horse. Yeah. yeah didn't I say that? And GC said that too. Oh wow! Now I've pulled the <laughs> I pulled the thing GC pulls on me. All right, don't listen. You're welcome, Miller. Don't worry about it. Miller, you had a junior moment. <laughs> Everything bounces out in the end, and like. Ah. Although I think Bopping Miller is a little excessive. They do seem to have more variety of horses than they did. Yeah. Bopping Miller might be excessive, but gosh darn it, it's fun. Okay, now somebody I has to I remember I had a. One of the first horses I captured in my last playthrough of Breath of the Wild had a pattern like this, where they had like white pants or whatever, and I just named them Diaper. Diaper. And I'm always like, damn it, Diaper. It's a good name. Because they were not a great horse. They were just like the first one I found. They were, I hated them. I'm like, yeah, damn it, Diaper, you're so stupid. I just named my horse like Glue or something like that. Just to be <laughs> really blunt. I'm trying to remember what I made my horses. Uh, 
I named my my current horses in Tears of the Kingdom. I have one that came over from Breath of the Wild called Smokey. I have a new one I caught named Gabriella. I have one named uh, BT Stallion because there's not enough characters in the name for to spell out Butt Stallion. <laughs> nice. And then the last one is a golden horse that I called Midas. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, that's right. I named mine after the cast of uh, Land Before Time. That's what I did. Spike. Bigfoot. Mm, uh, let's see. Nala. Is he a seagull? The pelican. Pelican. Oh, pelican. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Pe that he, the pelican. He said he reminded me of Launchpad McQuack. <laughs> You're definitely close there, I'd say. <laughs> That's what the goggles. The moment that they mentioned the uh, broken wagon, I was like, okay, I need to look for some wheels. And there's some wheels in the background right there. <laughs> that is not correct. <laughs> Ouch. It's uh, good for drifting. Okay, says it reminds me of the albatross from Rescuers. I, you know, I never watched the Rescuers. Uh, I watched the Rescuers Down Under, but not the Rescuers. Rescuers is cute. Uh, it's one of Bluth's last Disney uh, efforts, and um, it's it's it, you know it's it's uh it's pleasant. It's about the same you know like level of animation as like Robin Hood. Hmm. Um. And it had Bob Newhart and Eva Gabor. And for the for the for the for the uh, bird, do I have to take them. <laughs> yeah, you need to get your horse with your towing saddle or towing equipment. Wow, nice. Uh, why can't I move this rock? Because the rock is being weighed down by the cart. This is the thing. Okay. If you have one object, if you have object A sitting on top of object B. And you try to move object B, object B is going to act like object A has infinite weight on it. Okay. It's, I guess it's just I, a I way guess to they're keep changing, kind of... they changed that logic so that you can't make a flying machine so easily again. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Ah, here we go. I, I gotta see how this is gonna work out. Lego Tron says Castle Hopefully Return DLC. Yeah. I got I got trolled by someone sent me a thing that they're just like, hey, uh, when you're done with Goron City Quest. Uh, Cass will show up in one of the hot springs and he'll just be sitting there and there was a screen cap of Cass in one of the hot springs and I'm like, oh, he's alive! He's okay! Thank God! And then I look through it and somebody's like, oh, this is modded and I'm just like, God damn it! Everybody loves Cass. I just, I want to know he's okay. I'm very worried for the fact that he hasn't shown up at all. Eh, close enough. <laughs> 
I don't blame you. Sorry, Miller. Is it Pass in the castle. <laughs> Nintendo joke. <laughs> I like how you see you're worried for him. Has anyone checked out him lately? Is he okay? You know, just the Look, horse just... being able to have a towing harness automatically makes this just as good as Red Dead Redemption. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what about the realistic horse balls? Uh. Uh. Why would you even <laughs> ride a stallion? <laughs> anyway, um... What's that in front of us? Great fairy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we all got bopped. Yeah, I'm kind of bopping all of us. That's funny. Can't imagine why. Well, now my head hurts. <gasps> They're the troop, even though there's only two of them. I rescued that French horn player. I guess he hasn't caught up with them yet. <laughs> I'm a sucker for that. Oh, look at that. They're again. No, because they didn't have their cart yet. But I think now he'll show up the next time you see him. And you will run into a few other musical players around. Here we go. Hey, it's Terra! We get uh, to start with the best fairy. It's Mario. Yes. <laughs> that was amazing. Can you say that? And now I'm wondering if it is Charles Bartney. <laughs> I am too. I would not be surprised if he was doing some voices for this game too. So. Ah. Charles Martin has a great cameo in the Mar two great cameos in the Mario movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I, I recognized him as the like the plumber guy who looks like Jump Man mm -hmm. near the beginning of the movie, but I did not realize that Martin also played Mario's parents or yeah. Mario's dad. Yeah, felt very appropriate. Hmm. Uh... Your head got hurt. Say no, Kaiji. See, but the bits drop on mouse wet, was being well painful. I, I do like that this happens in a lot of Zelda games. I'm thinking back to like Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword and uh, huh? Wind Waker, which of course are the ones that were played in my generation. That you'll just have random NPCs that are there for like one medium length quest, but they're so over designed mm -hmm. and they're so <laughs> different to everything else. Huh? I mean, I guess Cass was kind of that in Breath of the Wild. Legatron says, just... recommend checking out the geoglyphs to the east. I still need to go back down to the Forbidden Temple first. Now and set your high room. Oh, they're just gonna tell you where they all are, okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. 
finding them is not the hard part. It's getting them back open is the hard part. Because it's not just a pay X amount of money. Huh? You just picked you up and just flung you into the stratosphere. Now, there's the other difference in this thing is that upgrading items costs money oh. now. Where? There's now a labor cost. Well, since you're not paying them rupees to open up in the first place, I guess. I guess. Well, one star. They probably also needed another money sink since you aren't going to be spending all of your rupees on bomb arrows. <laughs> yeah. But I want to do that with my money. I'm trying to think of what... No, actually, I've been trying to farm a lot of money recently mm -hmm. when I've been playing because I've been trying to buy mm. a, a specific thing. Oh. A specific set of things? Huh. And my horse is gone. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> Mastro said, we'll take your horse back. Uh, we'll make sure to board it when we get back. Oh, there's just a uh, cooking fire over here. Okay. Suggest that this house burned down around it. <laughs> Responsible cooking. Mm -hmm. Also, I couldn't believe I didn't notice it uh, first couple of times, but he hums the Zelda theme while cooking. Wow. How did I miss that? More boiling tar. Dude, I thought that was a Vulpix. He was Ooh, carrying some, some meat. delicious meat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Robbing people on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Yeah. It's not like you're Robin Hood, think. It, it's okay, he's evil. <laughs> <laughs> you see uh, another hunter in the dark forest. Have they ever discussed whether or not Link was inspired by Robin Hood? No, I'd be sure he wasn't. I know he was at least partially inspired by Peter Pan. Yeah, I can see that, sure. <laughs> see, I that never dawned on me that okay, you said it. I think those uh, peasants are new. I thought, in my opinion, when I uh, when I first played oh. Zelda, I thought he was inspired from traditional RPGs. Yeah, I mean, sure. It's yes, just, it's you know. They just wanted to like make it more actiony. Uh oh, big boss Bodkin. Oh, no. uh, do I guy. want to fight they, him, or do I just they want to made get you out of here? Yeah, I mean, you could do it. Just get up on the ridge. Your choice. You gotta uh, fight him and his work crew. I, uh, I want to try fighting him. Do it. There you go. Right away, he blows everybody up. Kick things off with a bang. All right, we're talking about the goon squad. They're coming up on the side. I don't think they distracted. even know where I came from. <laughs> like, who did that? <laughs> and now he's on fire. Nice job, Link. You're so cruel. No, oh, <laughs> he's not happy. Better cool down. He's like, what happened to my boss? You better chill out. <laughs> <laughs> what killed the Ice Age? The dinosaur. No, what the <laughs> what? God damn it! I see the ah. <laughs> or did the Ice Age <laughs> start saying Ice Age, and I'm like, nope, gonna let him finish this. Gonna let him make the spoonerism. Miller, how dare! You're supposed to correct me. Boss, but can't, can't let Grandpa make a fool out of himself. Ooh. Friendly Ooh. tar party. 16 fuse attack power. Nice. Mm -hmm. It chat's like, wait, raccoon? 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 You didn't notice a raccoon too? 
Hold on, I'll do it. It's on cooldown, I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> the Elmbrion was a red herring. I don't... I think it's supposed to be a black cat. Fox. Yeah, I was, yeah. Ha. Ha, ha. I should Rick Beyond. Where is he? Umbria, uh, like, uh, for some I, I think it's asking. 27. Him, wow, hmm. okay. Now I'm glad I did that. <laughs> nice. I think the first, uh, Pokemon for someone that was out there. <laughs> I remember seeing meat. <laughs> I remember seeing Pokemorphs as they were as they were called, uh, all the way back in the 2000s. So I think people instantly had that idea, you know, as soon as they uh, became acquainted with the uh, franchise. Hmm. I mean, especially I mean, since in the first game, uh, Bill turns himself into a Pokemon, and people are like, "Huh." <laughs> 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 oh yeah, that's right. He did do that in the first. One. I completely forgot about that. Now it makes sense. Yeah. What if Pikachu could talk and was smoking hot? <laughs> what if Pikachu. a human went inside a Pokeball? Not when you punk. I think Pikachu would be like, "Huh? I didn't know we could do that." You know? Okay. Have they ever shown what it's like inside a Pokeball? Uh, yes, there was at least one episode, it might have even been a two-parter, where Ash and the gang went inside a Pokeball. And it's basically a dreamscape. The Pokemon can just summon up whatever they want. Oh, okay, so it's not like a spherical uh, little house or something? <laughs> uh, it sounds like to me, I've never seen the episode, but it sounds like it's like a hollow deck in there for them. Yeah. <laughs> it's Kelton. Well, the Pokemon themselves is supposedly stored as light. Hence why they come out as like a laser. Oh, okay. Uh and so their their existence is entirely subjective or something. What's that? I don't like that. It's Kilton's brother, Colton. We're getting into Ghibli territory again. Try to turn yourself into a legendary creature, a Satori no less. <laughs> so, uh, it's Colton. This game's tingle now. <laughs> no, I guess what? What do you mean by he's well, tingle? You know, tingle, tingle, tingle originally person's... was just somebody who uh, kept trying to dress up as Link because he was <laughs> trying to be a legendary hero. <laughs> oh yeah, and then he wanted to be a fairy really bad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sure. Oh, and Tesla says the character Zion like less than Tingle. And now there's two of them. I was supposed to say bubble gum. <laughs> Who knew it could gumbo like that? So nimby bimby. Didn't know we had a another Carolar here. Sure. I thought Jones is the only one. Danny DeVito is Tingle. Tingle, Tingle, cool old empire. <laughs> so anyway, I just started throwing bombs at them. <laughs> If 
gonna he's gonna want more, isn't he? Yeah. Well. Hmm. But he'll trade you for them. So this is how you get the stuff that you got from Kilton in the first game, where you had uh, the Bacoblin mask and the Moblin mask and all this kind of stuff. Oh. Kilton's heading up to Terrytown. Anyway, do do do. Eco pond. I did not find uh, Kilton and Colton until today, despite how much I've been playing this game. There's so a I lot of stuff like, to do in this game, so. <laughs> yeah, I had like 40 booble gems to give him. I was actually pretty happy to do when I found out there's a lot of people around my neighborhood that are playing Zelda okay. right now. I should probably head over to the Forbidden Temple. Mm. Even my brother's getting back into it. Even though he only really played the second one, only because I was at the last boss. Oh. Search for Colton. I appreciate the fact that quest management has come such a long way. Okay. Because it's kind of necessary in a world of this scale with such complex tasks to perform. You can't really there's... just meander around. I don't quite understand the difference between there's like different categories of quests in this game, right? You have your main quests, which sure, and you have side quests, sure, and you have shrine quests, sure. But then there's side adventures? I'm I not guess. sure what that, how those are delineated from side quests. What does, what's the difference there? Yeah, you got me. I, I mean, if I had to guess, I would say adventures are probably less, you know, they're, they're probably the, the lighter, more fun things, less No, serious. the adventures are like the bigger side quests usually. Oh, okay. That sounds like the Blood Moon's coming up. I don't yep. know what the distinction is. There. The perfect quest form. <gasps> Raccoon! Hmm. Of the blood stained moon shines upon the, the trash panda on commander. Yeah, we know how that goes. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> how dare you? Chad immediately eats. We eat the raccoon on the day of the red moon. <laughs> no, it's too soon. Here is the forbidden temple. The forbidden temple. Definitely not the Temple of Time from Skyward Sword. Despite the fact that way too many things line up.
Nope. Well, the entrance is about halfway up. Damn, they're going head pat crazy. Oh my gosh, too many head pats! <laughs> Man, am I glad I had that queuing system. No, I just had a, a terrible idea for a gag form. I'll tell you in message. Of course he's hidden. Of course he's Jonas. The actor since I have 22,000 points and so god help me, I'll use them. <laughs> <laughs> knew that the raccoon was actually made out of gelatin with how much he'd be jiggling. <laughs> oh my god, you started a head pat train. Can we get to level two? <laughs> huh. Test your might. Test your hype. Lawless victory. Hypetality. Awesome, man. That's a lot of pats. I'm joining right here. They're just doing so many bats! <laughs> well, Arcus, uh, I'm pretty sure is a big fan of raccoons. <laughs> well, Arcus, I believe, is a raccoon. Oh, that explains it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just watching back that squish, squish, what squish, killed squish, the Ice Age of the Dinosaurs. It's all right, Doc. <laughs> Doc. They're gonna pet, uh, pet, uh, Lego Tron says they're gonna pet him so much he's gonna wear away loose hair. <laughs> Dragon Bone Bokobo. Look, if you're gonna keep that up, then I'm gonna have to do something worse. I'm gonna pet Raccoon Rick, or Cat Rick. And there's nothing you can do about it. What will this madness end? It won't. <laughs> think of the children! Mm, won't somebody think of the children? He's taking it in stride, <laughs> though. He's just kind of like, cool, yeah, okay, I'll allow it. I will continue to squimsh. This place is significantly easier to get through without all the guardians. Hmm. <laughs> Why is that down there, though? You could use your... Yeah. Zoom. Just a bunch of flowers. Okay. Try to glide over everything. Don't even bother with the, the goblins. Arcus is still going. Kayak Dirk has run out of points and Arcus Velas still is going. My well, god. Well, he's got a whole hour to waste all his points, so. Once he's See, done. Joke's on you. We are about to add the 150,000 points for uh, TTS or something. <laughs> 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 He throws it a boop. Squishy, squishy, squishy.
Oh, K Actor, you only had 22,000? I have more than that. I use my points pretty regularly. Yeah, Federick says he has 400,000. <laughs> Jesus. I have uh, 325,000. Oh my god, you people. I have 246,000. So when you eat them, <laughs> yeah, man, cats don't get enough respect. Mm. Well, I don't think it's bugged. Hey, it finally stopped. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rick says oh. with a uh, mild annoyance. Wait, wait, hang on. <laughs> there we go. Mild. Nah, I don't think we're gonna have to that. use your entire brain for this one. Yeah, okay. I have these two pieces. Okay. Nah, Rick loved it, guys. Can he do a check and Rick activate his entire brain? Can he do it? Will Most it blend? Most people only use 15% of their neurons according to the hoax study that I made up right now. Can Rick use all of them right here, right now? Wait, is also... Oh, okay. I'm gonna say... I know it's fine for a minute, there's gonna be a rogues cube in here, and I said, this is Jonas's field. Meh. I think I'm sort of like, I was sort of observing it, but I didn't want a backseat. Yeah. The 15% statistics is, is really that 15% of your neurons are firing at any one time. Yeah, if all your neurons are firing... the same thing as saying, oh, in a four-stroke engine, you're only using 25% of your cylinders at any time. It's like, well, yeah, because they need to not fire at times. Yeah, if 100% if of your neurons are firing, you'd be having a seizure or something. Yeah, that you'd be in hell. You'd feel nothing but pain and anxiety and like the worst fucking existence. <laughs> yes. Put the flamethrower on the stick. So wait, does no, that you mean... have flamethrower stick. That's yeah, what I was gonna say. Does Link have a flamethrower? Damn right he does. Damn right. If you swing it a couple times, you can see how it works too. Yeah. Right, okay. If he can get a flamethrower, then when's he gonna get a gun? Oh gonna... yeah. That's what I'm talking about. This is Baseball just should a... be like that. This is like a baby <laughs> level. This is the first step to Link getting a gun. <laughs> What's the uh this is a YouTube video that keeps popping up of somebody who had the like the baseball bat that used shotgun shells to get <laughs> like a super strong hit. Sorry, that was loud. Yeah, you could <laughs> apparently funny. fuse these blocks to uh a weapon. Even though really? you need them for the puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> Can you fuse them and then take them out of the out of the shrine? Well you'd destroy okay. them if you tried to unfuse them. Oh, okay. I just, I, I, I wonder if at some point that's going to become a mechanic. Like if they just, they're going to go that right brain on it. Now, before you use these up, Rick, because they will kind of lock into place once you solve this, there is a treasure chest off this in the corner. You need to somehow get up to. <clears throat> So I'm still uh, the back right corner. Oh, up there. So for the file while I was browsing today, I was looking to uh, I was looking up to see how popular Digimon was this year, and I found out in Toei's website, yeah, well, of course, Dragon Ball Z and One Piece are like ten times ahead of everybody uh, in terms of popularity. But it turns out, right behind them is Digimon Slam Dunk and Saint Saya. I never heard of Saint Saya though. 
I've heard the name. I've never seen it. But I was actually very surprised there was a, a, a there was a basketball maker doing so well. Hmm. Okay. I always thought Hajime Oipo would be more popular. All right, gotta share this. It's cute. It's completely irrelevant, and it's just fan art. But it's it's cute. It's it's uh, Link in the Toriyama style. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, hold on. Let me, let me. Oh, that's that is cute. Have and, you seen the the three D render somebody did with that? Because I believe that art was done in yeah. Blender, in like grease I, paint or whatever. I did not. Oh. Let's see if I can find that. <laughs> I, it doesn't let you walk off the edge when you're doing that. Yeah, you know, I actually uh, long ago did stuff like that too with cartoons, just uh, just uh, poke fun at them. But it was just posting for uh, for humor. But one thing I'd like to say, I, I had a good laugh when I found he drew like uh, Superman his style once when he was uh, early on his early days. Superman? Oh, Toriyama? Nice. Yeah. It was just poke fun at the invincible superhero idea. Hmm. I have to see if I can find it. But Goku is basically Superman. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. In Dragon Ball Z, he literally was. Closest thing you can get. In original him. Dragon Ball, he was the Monkey King. In Dragon Ball Z, he was Superman. <laughs> Well, Superman practically can't get hurt. Goku can't get hurt. Could it be? Oh, that's maybe awesome. like five feet further into the thing. Let's continue into the last chamber. <gasps> oh no, they got a statue. She's been toppled. I need to get black. Uh, I need to uh, the black. I need to get back into Blender. Now, how am I supposed to get my heart containers? <laughs> Uh -huh. What's this? Something you... behind her. So, Miller, have you messed with Blender much? A tiny bit. Do you know what freestyle is? Uh, It's like a type of modeling different from, like, cubes or metaballs. No, no. Um, Freestyle is a specific kind of... You have to, you have to mark a line as freestyle. Um, but basically what it is is when you're doing, like quote-unquote cartoon style renders um it tells the renderer which lines are to be considered like absolute lines like like some you know in, in some types of setups like it won't render certain lines so that you don't see like all the all the little little faces on the on the on the poly mesh but um mm -hmm. lines mark freestyle will just always be rendered as like solid lines no matter what angle and that's something I really want to learn because I've seen people, like with this picture, I've seen people really use it to get great effect. Mm -hmm. So uh, so now we have this big map of Hyrule with a bunch of different sigils on it. Nice. Actually, I have to disagree with the Goku versus Super Hitman. I mean, as much as a big fan of me with Goku, I doubt he could beat Superman. Oh. And... It's and uh, it's uh, it's even hinted in Kill no, Bill. No, Goku ball. could absolutely beat Superman. Oh, don't. Super Bill shows time and time again as when Superman tries to fight somebody who's at the same power level than him, he does terrible because he has actual no combat training. He doesn't know how to fight anything that's on his level because he doesn't know how to fight smarter than them. Right, he's essentially a demigod. He, right, but... he's just a bulldozer and that's all he knows how to do is just go full force at something if that solution doesn't work he has no recourse Superman's tanky Whereas Goku much. has actual martial arts training right 
Okay. I think the, then... I think the thing about that is that uh, Superman does know how to fight, but he can really only be taught how to fight like on a human scale, and okay. he has way more power than that. <laughs> <laughs> But the thing about Superman, though, is his whole gimmick is really he's just insanely powerful. Uh, Goku, yeah, he, he trains, he's got more shorts, and, but the thing is he has to focus, and he just basically has to... God, I just well, realized we just... really doing the who we were in a fight. <laughs> yeah, we had I, didn't, uh... I, I didn't mean to. <laughs> I can take the, I'll take that L for that one. Bop me, chat. I always think back to the uh, episode of the Batman of the like the first um, crossover episode in the '90s Batman and Superman shows where Superman shows up in Gotham, and when they first meet each other, Superman's trying to bully Batman. And Batman just grabs him and straight throws him, and Superman's like, "What the hell?" He's just completely blindsided by being tossed around. <laughs> okay, so do we have a pet? I want to pet the GC. Nah, don't pet me. I I try to avoid those verse magics. I I honestly I I don't even bother with them anymore. It the the time I only really got into it was with Goku versus Vegeta, which is a legitimate match. Oh, yeah. And everybody, I, I I still laugh to this day because Vegeta thinks he's outclassed, but in his very first fight, he had Goku on the ropes and. He never ever he somehow forgot about that. But every time after that, uh, even oh actually you know what? In the movie recently, he got the one up on Goku again. I forgot about that. Oxus is middle is me out there showing Superman punching a laser. It's like the the Fletcher cartoons or whatever. Superman's abilities in power level have varied somewhat depending on the medium and era and plot necessity. Oh, of course. Every, every superhero thing has done that. Yeah. But it's, as I understand, like, he pretty much can beat enemy as long as it's not kryptonite. But that's the other problem, too, is that I've seen over the years they sort of wishy-washy yeah. with that. I've seen in some media that, like, if he's if he doesn't have access to sunlight long enough, he'll start to poop out. That I heard too. Although, although it takes a while. Well, because I think they're starting to go with the idea that he is powered by sunlight now, Superman. Right. Always been a thing. It's just always also been ambiguous about how often does he actually need to contact with yellow sunlight. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and it, does it if he doesn't have yellow sunlight? What they does frequently he like do is dying, like, or does he just lose the superpowers? What they frequently and, do is like, uh, oh, there's red sunlight radiation that immediately takes away Superman's powers. Like, right. Mm, okay. <laughs> Which implies, I mean, if we're following logic, that he's burning through it really fast. You know, the, uh, the whatever he gets from the the yellow band emissions. And I think one of the biggest upsets in this whole Goku vs. Superman debate uh, that I and I personally enjoyed because it was something I had I think it had to be established to fans uh, is in the Frieza movie uh, Goku gets taken out by a simple ray gun while he because he's too focused on on Frieza and people are saying what? Well, I said that makes sense. He's Goku has to stay focused in the fight to keep up his ridiculous power. Mm. He just got shot by a me uh, feeble ray gun, and that was it. He was out. I feel like trying to plan. I mean, like unless you know, if there's no, if there's no like story bible mapping out limitations and stuff, it gets tricky trying to plan stories around you know characters with absurd amounts of power being handicapped. Well, not not handicapped. That's not the right word. Like. Um, temporarily uh, nerfed in some way or another by some sort of plot point. Like, I mean, they had well, they had power levels in, in Dragon Ball, right? Like, 
Yes, but the thing about that, that was a more of a writing style, like Toriyama admitted. It's just, mm. um, the thing about the power levels was just to give the audience, like, an idea who was stronger. But, of course, like, uh, on Earth, they had the power to control that. Mm -hmm. Freeze's army didn't. So, so power levels are not necessarily a guaranteed stat? Yes. Okay. Those are bullshit. Okay, yeah. all right. <laughs> The Freeze army didn't know so I think uh, a power like that even existed. That was their disadvantage. Okay. And, uh, so it was but fun yeah. though at the time. Basically, with characters like this, I feel like it, there's no way to write a foolproof, um, absolutely foolproof. Uh, um, In the immortal words of Stan Lee, I want I, I'll I decide who wins the fight. <laughs> Excelsior. Um but there's always gonna be some kind of trapdoor yeah. where, you know, someone could say, Oh, but you know, he could yes, just there, do such there and such. can be a situation where literally any result can happen. That's how writing works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was a pretty cool idea, uh, in Dragon Ball Z with the Scouter situation because a lot of people said, Well, if you get scammed by a scouter, you you know who's gonna win or lose no matter what. But the Freeze Army, like the new antagonists and popular antagonists at the time, were just basically uh, figured that whoever they say scan, they could tell immediately who they could beat, and it was a fun idea at the time. Yeah. This is why I generally, like, avoid these kinds of arguments and just fan communities in general, because, like, it, 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 well, to... why, it's like I say, that's why I stay out of them, because they, it's, there's really no point. It's right, so the, Rick, these are a fun one. You have to find some way to yank the cork out. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm yeah. doing that. <laughs> hmm. Also, someone brought up a very cool idea, uh, thing I never noticed in Dragon Ball recently. People think Goku doesn't learn. He learns. But it's very, very small details and lot, lots of little things that you don't notice. Uh, but one thing that I, I was surprised a fan caught, and I said, I didn't realize this until he pointed it out. But if you ever watched the original Dragon Ball, when Krillin was killed, Goku went on, uh, got his revenge on King, King Piccolo the back then. Hmm. Frieza... When he killed Krillin, he get, yeah he forgave him or he didn't forgive him, but he said he 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 wouldn't kill him. So there you go. Mm. Goku has a lot. The reason that also that's why the reason why Vegeta is so popular because he goes through so many changes, character growth that people will find that amazing. But yeah, Goku is a very slow protagonist. Oh, now they're talking about Kitsune versus you don't. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Didn't you don't get a power boost or something during the arc? There was a point after Steward got depowered that you don't became nearly godlike. No, he didn't really, from my interpretation, uh, he got a he got a power up, but wasn't strong enough against all uh, strong enough to take on all three of them, of course. But he was strong enough to overpower one of them. Yes. Also, I still found that that his power form pretty cool. Also, you are now playing Silent Hill. <laughs> <laughs> Shine the light in the darkness. Yeah. Roger's excited to see Silent Hill too. He never got to play it. Have you been into this? Uh, Rick, have you run into any any surfaces you can't ascend through? I mean, like if they're material. high enough. I don't well, know no, if I mean, there's like, any material that prevents it. Oh, okay, I'm just curious. I haven't seen anything like that. It's usually just the way that the object is modeled. There's not a big enough 
space for you to ascend into. Or like the whole thing is at a steep slant, so you can't use it. Very, very gently moving spike walls. Goku versus Kitsune. What about Goku versus Q? Okay, one of those is a god, one of them isn't. Oh, so Goku's a god, huh? That's good. There's nothing here. Absolutely nothing there at all. <gasps> thing. You got a thing. Small key. Deviant's curse says, "What about Goku versus every single Pokemon? One of those is a god, one of those isn't." Now I don't know if it's Arceus or Mew, but one of them is a god. <laughs> What about Goku versus Shadow? <laughs> First of all, I am Vegeta. Uh, clearly, he can't defeat the ultimate life form. Ditto, yeah, Ditto is the god of fertility. <laughs> yeah. What if I create a spotlight? No, that doesn't do any bounce light. Dramatic, <laughs> but useless. Thinking realistic lighting would create a bunch of bounce light, but no. <laughs> nice. No, this is how this is how they have the uh, ability for you to create and move and change light sources in this game. Is they make them very simple, no the, ambient occlusion, no bounces, no anything like that. Yeah, the the lighting in this area is very strange. It looks almost like there's no lighting, just like a black mask over everything except the the, the throw region. Probably. I know the, um, when you're in the depths and you use the seeds to light up stuff, there's no shadows from where the seeds you place. It's just everything in a certain radius is lit up, and that's it. It doesn't matter if the seed actually has, like, a line of sight to a certain object. If it's, it's not inside the radius, it's lit up. Yeah. Which is how the uh, flare is in Deep Rock work as well. So again, it's it's a thing where it's like if you can have the users create light sources, you kind of have to do that, or else it gets impossibly expensive. It's raining again. Let's see.
Where are you right now? You're somewhere near Mount Doom, right? No. Not to the other side. Near uh, Rita Village. Ah, uh, okay. I'll need to get that tower over there so I can get this region. That looks like it's going to be quite a trick. It's fine. Maybe you should use the stars to navigate on your trek. Maybe you could even call it a star trek. Oh, that's a show, isn't it? A funny comparison is. In chat, uh, Kit is compared to Chi Chi as Great Kasu is compared to Goku. So, therefore, Kit's the strongest character in, in House Pets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You never get old, Internet. One of the things I do have to point out that's I very much appreciate that they're doing this now, but after uh, after what I heard about the, uh, which I gotta, I'm gonna see this weekend, but the Dragon Ball movie, uh, they're going to superhero genre with Dragon Ball now, and I really very much appreciate that. I am? Yeah. Isn't that what they tried to do with Dragon Ball GT? Mmm. Dragon Ball GT is a really weird example. They tried to go slice of life with, uh, dra uh, with Dragon Ball Z. Now GT is sorry, go ahead. GT didn't really do that very well. GT was the one where Toriyama took his hand off the wheel, right, and like somebody yeah, he else. Wasn't uh, doing it. Thank no, you. yeah, he was. He was he let somebody else take over, but that didn't. Yeah, Super, on the other hand, is pretty much. Recently, has been going. I've seen some of it. Uh, it's been going slice of life mm. with superheroes. So, pretty much, it feels like it's going back to, uh, to, to the 90s again, actually, when I, if I think about it, which is actually mm. pretty interesting. It's just huh? characters like okay, Trump. There it goes. <laughs> Signs <laughs> slid there for a second, and I was worried. The setting is actually on Capsicorp, and if you know Capsicorp, they're, that's pretty much Bulma's family. Ah. Mm. That means Piccolo is relevant again. And Piccolo is awesome. Also appreciate it when I get the ability to teleport my horse to me again. Horse is done. We're in Canada now. Are we always in Canada? Well, Rick's killing the most. Canada's going to be one. Those have so many hit points. Those scare the crap out of me. Okay. I've seen some videos. I would never want to be anywhere near one of those things. My sister likes to take me to a zoo sometimes and I Well I don't I don't particularly visit the zoos anymore. I did get to see one uh finally up close last year or two years ago. And yeah, they were very really intimidating right up there. close. Have you ever seen the crash test dummy footage of like a fake mo of, of a car running into a fake moose no it's terrifying 
Because the moose doesn't stop the car. The moose just cleaves the top half of the car off. God. Huh. Those guys have horses. They got horsies. Now I have to check that out later. Ow. Ooh, this could be rough. I know the Mythbusters did it once. There you go. Oh, nice! Built, like a, a horse out of plywood and a big cylinder of rubber. And drove a car through, drove a remote control car through it, and it just sheared off the hood and basically everything that was above the door handles, including anybody who would have been above the door handles. Good times. <laughs> no, the exact opposite of good times. In well, fact, yeah, I, I when I say good times, it's usually sarcastic. There you go, the horn player's now with him. He made his way. There's Burial. No, this elf, Eustace, doesn't get to drive the cart anymore. <laughs> Man, I, I still love that violin. I'm trying to refrain the urge of calling them fiddles because that's what they sound like down here. <laughs> In the Maritime Prize game, we love our, uh, our old folks love fiddles. So there is an Alaskan moose, the largest recorded in the world, that was 1,808 pounds. For the you know, just for the record, that's only 200 pounds lighter than the smallest compact car. Yeah, uh, so moose are megafauna left over from the previous ice age. <laughs> Crazy. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, could a moose beat Goku? Ah, real questions. The moose would sneak attack Goku when he dies. The fans are just like, what? What just happened? <laughs> I brought Dragon Ball into the chat. I'm sorry. How dare you? I'm sorry. I mean, I, I thought we were over this kind of thing uh, back when I was in high school. <laughs> it's well, it's funny because, like, conversations about things like power levels and who could beat you they're fun in person they're absolutely awful on the internet because <laughs> on the internet the only thing that matters is that I'm right yeah <laughs> like that's that's all that it comes down to is everybody's trying to be the I'm right guy yeah and when it comes to characters like Superman there's you know almost what, 70, 80 years worth of lore now? Mm -hmm. So it becomes like, it's like building a legal case. You know, you have to be like, okay, I found, you know, I went into the archives and dug out Action Comics 136 where he, you know, like... I found precedent in uh, 1945 yeah. in this one comic where he punched Hitler. And then you, you have to go to the judge and the judge is Kevin Smith in a judge outfit. And... <laughs> Or even better, uh, I found out that Goku won this up by the by by he just pressed his toe into the ground. There, justified. Thanks. Like they can come up with any sort of excuse. That's why you don't go near these. But yeah, I learned a lot ago to how these kind of things work out. Can you shoot the dog? <laughs> what is? I'm just asking. Can you feed the dog? Dog's like, I don't like raw prime meat. I prefer it lightly seared. Oh, there he goes. That is a lot more meat than he should be eating. But I digress. I do have to say that I can't deny I loved gra gra Dragon Wild growing up. It's because of how I love Toriyama's right <laughs> style of escalation. What the? 
I, I chase probably. Tail. Oh, as you know, I probably. Dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now the dog will follow you around for a while. Oh. Kind of. I oh. think there's a bug with the dogs right now. Mm -hmm. I've seen some other reports oh. online about this that they uh, leash too aggressively. <laughs> which is maybe kind of appropriate oh. for dogs. Um, you're supposed to be able to have them follow you and then they can lead you to treasure. But basically, oh. if they get like more than 30 feet away from the point they're supposed to stay at, then they just go back. And all basically all the treasure you're looking for is going to be further away from the stables or whatever than that. Mm. So they kind of don't do what they're supposed to do. Including there's a quest where you have to have a dog sniff out something for you and it doesn't work currently because the dog won't go to the place you need it to. Mm. It'll keep turning around and heading back to the stable. Huh. So, hmm. Yep, and you cannot pet the dog in this game. Same as Breath of the Wild. Because of Tatch. Miyamoto's annoying requirement that every every action needs at least two purposes. recipes on the wall. Oh. Beet, butter, meat, spicy pepper, and milk. That's pretty cool. It's like a bolognese or something? Uh, that's mm -hmm. probably curry. Yeah. No, curry would be with rice. That's with wheat. Oh. Hmm. Cook it a fine inch. It's Is that porridge right? curry. Okay. Got it memorized. Rice is, rice is a lot more green and has like curled stalks. Name's Axel. Got it memorized. All right, they need a roof on their cart. Yeah, they do. I could just make a flat roof, but I can make like an you know, a pointy roof too. Malachi says, is there no way of recording recipes? Not that I've been able to find. You can look at any meal you have on you and uh, click, like, review recipe, and it'll show you the ingredients that went into yeah, it. Yeah, we do but... have... There is a recipe logbook now. Wait, where's that? Pretty sure they said there was one. Let me see. That would be in. Materials. Pretty sure they said there was one somewhere. Whatever. Frederick, are you referring to the Brian David Gilbert video? Of him trying to make a whole bunch of recipes from Breath of the Wild in terrible, terrible ways. There we go. 
ja, ja. Ja, ja. Oh, okay. See, when I first try to put a roof on, he's just like, eh, could you make it a little bigger, actually? And I'm like, ah, oh, goddammit. <laughs> Can you just change a couple pixels? Move to the left a little bit more? <laughs> oh, you forgot a spot. <laughs> Oh, Canis Rufus says, select the ingredient and it'll show you all the recipes you've made with it. Okay. So, Miller, you're a programmer. What's the equivalent in programming of can you just change it? Can you just there move a few pixels yeah. to the left? Bunch oh, of recipe uh -huh. cards here. Like, what's the equivalent in programming of, like, an adjustment that the exact thinks is minor, but actually is going to take you a lot of time? Oh, there's just a fucking million things. Uh, what's the one that probably comes up the most? No, you've attached it to the wheel. <laughs> nice. It's hard for me to, like, think of one is the problem. Because <laughs> it's just like, they'd be like, okay, we could do that. Can we now do it, like, 20 times? And it's like, yes, but now I have to restructure everything I did. Because <laughs> I only programmed this in a way to do it this one time, this one specific yeah, way. Yeah. Now you want to do it 20 different ways, which means I have to make a whole framework in order to make it modular and allow you to have different options. Nice. Okay, going towards that purple thing up there. Yep. He said you need to kind of hang a left and then sort of go up. If you go straight at it, it's going to be too steep. Yeah. Uh-oh. You know, the horrible, horrible monster in me, like, wonders what happens if you're hauling around to spend PCs like this and then you, like, go off a cliff. Like, do they, you know, do they tumble out? Do they even react, or do they just sit there in the, you know, in the carriage as it careens into the into the abyss? These ones in specific, they'll react if you start getting on a tight in a uh, high slope or something, and then if they if the thing turns over, they just like despawn. They're like, ah, we're falling out, and then it cuts to black. <laughs> And then they nice. respawn back at the stable. Yeah, I figured, oh, sorry, so I figured that would what would happen. We're laughing like, don't worry, Link will save us. Falling down the cliff. Which I think it'll probably happen here, because it did to me. When you go up this last bit of the hill, they'd be like, ah! Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think probably the one that uh, I see the most is people who are just like, hey, can you just make it multiplayer? <laughs> can you just make it multiplayer? And it's just like, are you kidding me? Hey, Miller, can you just make Rick's avatar multiplayer? <laughs> technically, it already <laughs> is. Yeah, <technically laughs> there is a, everyone in chat can control it. <laughs> and it are... was like 90% of the work was getting the Twitch stuff to work. Hey Miller, can you make uh, Rick's uh, avatar an MMORPG? You know, call it Westworld. Wait, no. Avatar is <laughs> <laughs> already they said just make West multiplayer. That would be an awesome thing. Can you make a battle royale with loot boxes? Yeah, no, that that's the kind of thing I'd hear somebody say and be like, ah, you have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. You're just regurgitating buzzwords. You're just like, uh, well, battle royale, loot boxes, NFTs, uh, uh, AI, machine learning, put all that in. And I'm just like, you don't know what you're doing, do you? 
Is it you the literally crypto? have no context for what anything is in the industry. Yeah, yeah. yeah can we make a uh, West coin? Yeah, yeah. Hit this. Those just can't be enhanced. Yeah. Finger says it's why AI won't be able to take over programming, but the happen clients have to know what the hell it is they actually want and how to describe it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the biggest problem is that the shareholders and stuff and the people who are investigating AI yeah, and trying to see if they can use it to replace workers don't actually understand how much thought developers and stuff are putting into making things usable and feel good and like all this kind it's of like small details 90 percent mm. 99 percent of the issue is that a lot of people who do this kind of thing they just want to make money they don't have any particular care for what product it is so what they do is just string a bunch of buzzwords together like hey this is making money right now can you make this make money for me? <laughs> mm. So, Rick, if you look off to the east a bit, when you're not being shot at... Oh, that guy's got a cart. Oh, there's so many of these guys around here. Okay, now, so if you look off to the east, northeast, or sorry, west, northwest, you might be able to see it just barely kind of flying around in front of you. Yep, there it is. That hey, Jonas, like remember a... that thing you mentioned earlier in the stream that was in the old Legend of Zelda's? Three headed dragon? Yeah! Yeah, there's yeah. one. Huh. Yeah, they're here. Probably gonna have to fight it before I get up there. <laughs> get up on a no, high. You can avoid it pretty fine. Yeah. But what but if I want uh, to fight it? I I do I do definitely appreciate them adding a lot more enemies to this game. Yeah, gonna, it is no longer that, that, that was one of the, the main criticisms of Breath of the Wild is that there's only like what, twenty different enemies? They get a little stale <laughs> after a while. Yeah. There's Bacoblins, Moblins, Lizalfos, Taluses, Lynels, then Octoroks. Chew Jellies. Taluses. Choo Choo's, yeah. Choo Choo's, yeah. A couple different kinds of Choo Choo's. There's well, there's different types, but it's like uh, I'm talking about the different kinds of base things, right? I'm right. not gonna be like, oh, Bacoblin is different than a blue Bacoblin is different than a black Bacoblin is different than a silver Bacoblin. It's like, no, it's uh, all the same thing. Yeah, it's all the same. <laughs> yeah, it's just bigger numbers and a different color. It's not a different enemy. Yeah, they did that back in the original Zelda. I'm pretty sure they do it in all the other Zeldas after that too. But so this one has a lot more. Because you've got a bunch of different stuff on the surface, and then you've got, like, everything... Well, not everything, but a lot of different things in the depths as well. Like the froxes. The froxes? The froxes. Yeah, those, those oh. frog things that we fought. All those things! Okay, got it. Froxy. You've got those, you've got the constructs here, of course. They're like the uh, Guardian Scouts in the first game.
Yeah, Finger says, honestly, though, I like the Guardians as a scary enemy more than this game's version of that. That's true, but I think it was a different kind of vibe in Breath of the Wild, which the Guardians... I'm, I'm okay with them having retired Guardians from the uh, list of enemies for this game. Yeah. Mm. Took me a while to use the Guardians, but they're not just bad. Yeah, the Guardians are supposed to make the world itself feel dangerous and unwelcoming. And, you know, like, that was kind of the point. Yeah. It made and it currently, feel like... the part of the game that feels unwelcoming is the depth itself. Right. Yeah. I didn't know about the whole, like, mirror shield thing until, until well into the game. And the mirror oh, shield thing, like like using the we shield fight. as a mirror to deflect the um the beam. Oh, from the, the guardians. parrying the laser blasts. Yes. So I died a lot to the guardians, and I really ended up hitting them. Oh, I I can't tell you how many shields I broke trying to do that, and then just barely messing up the time. How many hundreds of times I got that timing wrong? <laughs> yeah. Break a few shields to learn how to reflect. Open barley. No. Oh. Open rye. Ah, Link has to do a deal with lasers too. Hmm. Ow. I mean, Adrian, the sandboxes are best when there's something goes cataclysmically wrong. Yep. In this game, I would say that's when the uh, wing on your vehicle times out. Like, I think you saw the other day, you had the hot air balloon just started blinking or was it a wing that started blinking and then it just disappeared yeah it was the wing yeah that that's the part where you have to like freak out and it's like oh, what am i gonna do what am i gonna do oh, you have to like come up with a quick play in the middle of the air mm. hello ray who says hi by petting mouse west repeatedly And this is toxic. Cover it. Open the gates. Make way. It's basically the same thing as that last shrine, only I need to solve the puzzle first to set it up. Honestly, it's funny that you were mentioning the dragons, Jonas, because I did not know that they were from any other Zelda game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of surprised, Zemer. That's a deep callback. You gotta get the thing. I I will say the name of the shrine kind of gives it away. Courage to fall.
Nope. <laughs> Sharks up. Sharks up in chat says there was a Gliakenspiel in Cadence of Hyrule. Gliakenspiel. So you haven't seen what happens if you hit those lasers, do have you? No. Because they don't do damage to you. Oh, okay. Finger says, yeah, that took me way too long to figure out. Yeah, it's one of those ones where if you've been playing carefully, you wouldn't have realized that the lasers open up trap door. No, I didn't. knew they open up trap doors. I just didn't huh. know that was going to be the solution. Yeah. Congratulations, you're on top of it. Now what? I was gonna see if there was anything over here. Doesn't look like it. ball on there first. Right there, Miller. All right. Uh, you uh, just a yeah. lot of bruising. You having a bird moment? Fine. His bird, his bird pride has been hurt. Like the first step to learning to fly is learning to fall. <laughs> I mean, flying really is just controlled falling. <laughs> it's 
Sleep balance. We're five minutes to midnight, by the way. Oh. So we are. What's so he is. Going? Maybe Rick will finally be able to get to that uh, thing. Is there balloon again? <laughs> Game Maybe he'll be able to get to that tower he keeps running with, towards. Game <laughs> constantly enticing me with other thing to run, things to run at. Now, I'm going towards the tower. I just need to get my horse. Sarah so Amberpaw says, Flying is the art of throwing yourself at the ground and missing. I would say that's called orbit. Look, all you gotta do is take a train, put it on a circular track, and make it accelerate, and accelerate, and accelerate, and accelerate until it's going like 75,000 meters per second, and then just switch the track. <laughs> Easy. All oh, that old track switcheroo. Did that actually kill the moose? Okay. Nice. Mm, raw gourmet maybe. Gourmet. Zero out of ten, awful game, not real. Moose should have killed you in one hit. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Eh, it's fine, I'm getting away from them. Random mooks. They come with you when you least expect it. Well, that one over there. Oh. Was seeing some news today about Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, four million copies in three days. Damn. Uh, one hundred and three percent saturation, which that... means so saturation is a percentage of how many people who own the console own the game. Which means there are more copies of Tears of the Kingdom sold than there are Switches. Huh. Huh. That's either collectors... ...or... ...maybe the black market, I don't know. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's entirely possible it's scalpers. Yeah, that's funny. Oh. If slash when I do get a switch, I'm definitely getting both this and uh, Breath of the Wild. Mm -hmm. Even though, you know, even though I thoroughly okay. played through Breath of the Wild. Down there. And then it was um, PC Gamer, and then. Was it Famitsu, or was it RPS? That both gave it 10 out of 10. Hmm. And like, there's literally only five games they've ever both agreed on as being 10 out of 10, and like, three of them are still <laughs> games. Nice. Oh, shit. Mm, the other two well, are yeah. like... That's okay to GTA eat, sure. 5. It's like GTA 5, Red Dead 2, and then... Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, and... Ocarina of Time are the only right. five games they've ever agreed on are f 10 out of 10. <laughs> okay, he's like, wow, they really go out of their way to make sure you can't use Ascend. Why'd they even give me this power? Hmm. <laughs> How much of time have you logged thus far on Tears of the Kingdom? Let's see. Good. That's a good question. Um. Mm -hmm. Ow. 
Well, seven uh, sessions averaging two and a half hours, so, um... Miller, what's 2.5 times 7? Uh, 17.5. Okay, so yeah, there you go. Matt Merb. Yeah, we might be at this game a while. That's okay, though. It's a beautiful game. I don't know what that is. And by a while, I mean it might be several months. Time to be is saying 50 to 80 hours. So if you only play this on stream, you're looking like six or more, six weeks. Yeah. <laughs> There's one. If it works, it works. Well, right. unless you run out of stamina. Commend Link on his climb skills in this series. I mean, that's honestly this Link's greatest superpower is his uncanny ability to climb shoot cliff surfaces. <laughs> Legend of Zelda movie starring Tom Cruise like 30 years ago. I mean, <laughs> has he really let 30 years stop him doing the same shit? I don't think he could quite, uh, I don't think he'd quite look the part now. Oh, well, yeah. There we go. I'm thinking like he's, Tom he's Cruise. a little puffier than that. Now. Yeah, I was, I was thinking like Tom Cruise right around Legend, you know? That's, just, that's more than 30 years ago. That's like 40 years ago now. Yeah, I still remember that that scene of the graspers coming up was like in all of the early teasers and people were like, oh, Link's gonna get captured by the Geeky Clan or something. And then, nope, it's literally this one thing that happens in five seconds. I want to see the Geeky Clans in this and if they still love bananas.
They're still here. Have we not fought them yet? Have we not run across them? Oh, you've like, you run into Oh, hi, tra fellow traveler. I'm looking for a something. Do you know where it is? Oh, that's nice. Hey, you wouldn't happen to know of a blonde haired hero running around, do you? You do? It's you! Time for you to die! Nice. All right, the labyrinths also extend up into the sky now, okay? <laughs> Not just up into the sky, also down into the ground. Oh boy, the that sounds Dive fun. Sky, we're a sword. That sounds like it's going to be busy. I, I have only done one labyrinth, and yeah, you have to basically do it three times, so I'm just like, ugh. Good shit. Why is now, they each do sound? different things, but... Mm. It's a long, long one. I do not know what that is. It looks like a battery of some kind. You are 100%-o. Oh, this must be the control mechanism. <laughs> you have a good time there? <laughs> yeah, just leans <laughs> making like airplane noises. <laughs> okay. It's like, Link, you have parts literally right there to make an actual airplane. He's like, no, I want to play with it and make airplane noises. <laughs> I'm on your side, wise guy. <laughs> Thank right, you, everybody, well, for stopping by. Yeah. Um, Rick, is it cool if we rate someone new? Sure. Are you cool, are you cool with that? Okay. Uh, his name is Duper. Uh, he's pretty cool. Um, is he super? Yes, he is super. That's D O O. Yeah, D O O R P. D O O P E R. Yeah, everybody check him out. He's fun. All right. All right. Night, everybody. Night, night. Good night.